So, happy Puerto Rican Heritage Month, mi gente. That's right, we are still celebrating my fellow Boricuas, and today we begin with a Puerto Rican Bronx-born, self-taught multimedia visual artist who specializes in surrealistic works featuring fantastical creatures that come to life. And she expresses her creativity through a variety of mediums, including sculpting, pouring resin, paintings, drawings, and creating works digitally. Her art addresses important topics such as mental health and life, shedding light on the various facets through her unique lens. And joining us to share more is multimedia visual artist Angelica Bautista, Jelly Stay Gucci. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I yes, love that tag thank name. You. Uh, I don't even know if that's the proper term, tag name, but I know that it's your artistic name. And uh, where did it come from? So, stay Gucci is, you know, like a slang term for doing well. So, stay Gucci is like, I stay well, I stay good, you know? So, Jelly um, is like a nickname that my mom gave me. So,. Because my name is Angelica, so ah. Jelly, like, you know, so, like, kind of like the middle of my name. So, Jelly, stay Gucci, so I stay good, I stay well, I stay. It's a, it's an affirmation. Yeah. That's lovely. Yeah. That's lovely. <laughs> and, um, and you know, we, we are uh, right here admiring some of your very colorful and very detailed uh, artistic work. And some of it may even be interpreted as being dark. Right. Right? Right. Um, so I, I know I just jumped right into it, but I, I'm sure our viewers are like, hey, what's going on right there <laughs> next door? But they, there's a lot of metaphors in, in your messaging. So um, let's talk about, I guess, how this particular style presented itself to you. Um, so I've always created art from a young age. Um, thankfully, I had a mother that really supported me in that. And she would buy me so many like art books and just let me kind of learn on my own. And um, I also used to draw um, little creatures with my grandmother. And we would just would, you know, just make like these little worlds. And I feel like that comes out a lot in my work, as well as um, I also love anime and manga. And I feel like that also has a uh, an impact on my work. I got you, I got yeah, you. Yeah. It influences uh, the way you design, right? Exactly. So what we're looking at, right, because, um, and just enlighten me on the different sectors within the visual arts uh, genre, right. right? Is this fine art? So I studied illustration in high school. Illustration, is this illustration? I would, you know, I always have trouble explaining my work, especially in art events that I attend and show my work in. I feel like it's just a mix of everything. Okay. Um, I did, you know, get some technical training in high school, so I would say that it could be considered fine art. Mm -hmm. um, I also am inspired by street artists, graffiti artists. Right. So, you know, all of that right. is it's, just it's together. It's a fusion. Yeah, it's a fusion. Exactly. It's a fusion. Well, that's what art is anyway, right? Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. It's all open for interpretation. But the only reason I brought it up is, is because I know you also dabble in digital art. And right. I remember you mentioning something prior to getting on air and designing covers for artists. Yes. And, uh, I, you know, and I want to dive into all of those things that you have been able to figure out a way to make a living off of, which is beautiful, right? Thank, yes, thank you. So I am so grateful that I can work with music artists that are up and coming and really bring to life their visions for their, for their own music. So I create cover arts for their albums, their mixtapes, their songs. Um, right now I'm working with a small group of artists that they collaborate on songs together, but they also make their own projects. And it's almost like it creates a flow of work when their album covers all share a kind of same Th there's vision. Something cohes there's something cohesive right. in knowing that it's you that did right. it. I like that. <laughs> I like that. You see, I saw it, I saw it, I saw it. I saw where you, where you were going with that. And that, that's wonderful, right? Yes. Because um, it's like you're actually, you're feeding each other. Exactly. Right? Mm -hmm. But yeah, you still end it with your signature. Right. 
where they know that's a jelly stay Gucci. Exactly. Weba. <laughs> <laughs> and so that leads me to your animal series, uh, which I found very captivating. Thank you. Again, uh, one of the things that I um, was able to see in your work is that you're very spiritual, right? I would like to think so. No, in my are. own way. You are. Well, <laughs> it, it's visible. It's visible in the work, which is why it's important for us to show your the, the variety of work that you provide. But in it, for and of course, this is my interpretation, in it, you're able to see that there's a lot of reflecting that happens mm -hmm. in the process. And I don't know if it's something that you're going through in that moment that you need to address, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and, and then, of course, it loans itself to being relatable to right. all of us going through something right now. <laughs> uh, anywho. <laughs> so I always like to say that my art speaks for itself. Mm -hmm. I welcome people to interpret it um, because I feel like my art speaks more freely than I can. <laughs> I feel like I struggle um, coming up with the words sometimes. I want to talk about the animal series though because I yeah. saw um, that we have the the dog, yes, uh, the the monkey, mm -hmm. uh, the skunk, mm -hmm. um, the gorilla, the gorilla, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm missing one. That, oh, the cat. Yes. And the cat. Yes. Right? Look at that. I, have, I memorized <laughs> them all. And I know we're going to be showing images of them. But the point is, is in the oh, and Mickey Mouse. I know Mickey Mouse doesn't really <laughs> count, but it, but it's because it's not Mickey Mouse. It's your rendition mm -hmm. of a certain feeling yeah, that yeah. Mickey Mouse could be having. So that the Mickey Mouse was part of Inktober. Um, so every. So that's a separate thing. Every, yeah. Every okay. month, um, artists usually participate in this thing called Inktober on Instagram mm -hmm. and multiple artists create their own prompt list. Mm -hmm. um, so the one I was following was Stinktober and that Stink one Tober? Stinktober uh -huh. <laughs> and that one specifically was Mickey Icky uh -huh. and so it was like Mickey Mouse sick. Uh -huh. and gross and yeah yeah you can see in the eyes right yeah <laughs> i feel like all of us now with the changing weather right. like it's hot one day cold the next so yeah i know the inconsistencies <laughs> i get it i get it now let's go back to the animal series yes. Right, but the, he wasn't, uh, Mickey wasn't part of that animal no. series but the animal series was something that you were commissioned to do i right? wasn't i wasn't Wait, Okay, good. You finish sorry, it. Sorry. No, because I'm trying to, <laughs> because we had a, we, we talked about a lot, and I was very excited to know that you're working with like industry, like the cannabis industry. So I I would like to work with the cannabis industry. Um, I feel like it's growing so quickly, and a lot of the time they use like illustrative covers and on their products, and I feel like I could really work well in that. Um, so I decided to create these mock-up versions of like future brand um, products that um, could be used. That would identify the, the flavor? Like that would, yeah, the, the strains and right. um, all that. So they're all named by actual strain names. Ah. So I based it off of that. And that's the animal series that I yes. keep going back to. Obviously I was captivated by it. <laughs> Yes, because it does have its own, it has its own signature. It does, yes. Yeah. I created all of them um, on my iPad mm -hmm. using Procreate. I drew them out all first, and then I worked around the illustration on Adobe Illustrator and created, like, the product, like, normal things you see on a product, like the labels and the ounces and things like that. Um, I also did like the the back label, like where it has a warning sign and things of that nature. You're serious about this? <laughs> it's like you're, so somebody's yeah. listening. <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, appealing to the arts community. <laughs> Who's probably prescribed? <laughs> Medicinal. And medicinal, of course, yeah. <laughs> Gotta keep it legit. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. 
Right. <laughs> yeah. All right. So that I think that's very clever. Actually. Thank you. I think it's very clever, and and perhaps somebody watching will take that into consideration. And um, but then there's the actual cannabis location in which you were exhibited. So yes. you're obviously after that cannabis. <laughs> I think I would work well in it, yes. So, so how did that come about, that you're on display at a cannabis dispensary? Thankfully, I had someone who worked there, mm -hmm. and she reached out to me because um, that location specifically, they're showing, they're showcasing artists that they really gravitate towards. Um, and they also have um, musical artists come and you know right they do like social gatherings yes right? they, like open mics and things of that nature yes i mean i don't know if it's an open mic but the idea is that people are commuting there performing right. and while people are shopping mm -hmm. their cannabis products and um they reached out to me to show work and i was really excited my work was up for like a month so it was really nice to go in and see and everybody was so welcoming and love to speak about my work and it was just really nice. Yeah, I bet they appreciated it too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But right. well, congratulations Thank on that. Thank you. Now before we go, we have to talk about the, yes. the artwork that you're surrounded by and um, the the meanings behind them. I mean, I, I, I can give you my interpretation, but um, I know they're each titled. I would love if you could share the titles and, and, and what inspired them, because I know that uh, no matter what people may perceive and what they're visualizing, this has a mental wellness component uh, right. messaging uh, messaging within it. Right. But it's all uh, a matter of interpretation, and it also reflects where a person is. Right. I think that, you know, mental health is usually demonized. Mm -hmm. So I think that kind of goes hand in hand with my work. Mm -hmm. I like to say that my work is the juxtaposition of beauty and ugliness. So we can find beauty in something that's ugly. Um, this specific piece is called Chaotic Time. I did mm -hmm. it around the time of COVID. So <laughs> that's the reason why I mm. named it that. Mm. All the emotions and thoughts and everything that I'm sure everybody was going through. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> it was a it was a crazy time. Um, and then this piece is called People Pleaser. Uh -huh. And we all know that like people pleasing is something that a lot of people kind of fall into. Uh huh. Well, why the slot machine? Uh, just in, in, in it's, I guess, using it as a symbolism of people pleasing. Right. So, you know, you kind of go into slots you want something specific. Uh -huh. So if this person is wanting something specific and you're willing to give it. Got it. People pleasing. Got it. You know, it's you're, like a you're, you're being of like, used. Yeah, right, you're being right, used. Right. Like, and then it can, that cycle continues. Uh, Do you know what I mean? Yes. Because you continue to uh -huh. yeah. use that slot machine yeah. no matter the price. Yeah, it's like hypnotized. It's yeah. like sold out. <laughs> A sellout in right. a sense of like, hey, I'm just gonna do what I need to to get what I want. Right, exactly. I got you. <laughs> All right. And then this piece here, mm -hmm. um, I don't. This kind of untitled right now. Right? I okay. was kind of juggling with the name um, interdimensional. Mm -hmm. This one, I would say for me right now, doesn't have a specific meaning. But okay. I always like hearing people's interpretations. interpretations. Mm -hmm. I'm, I always welcome that because I feel like. The, the best way for me to improve is to hear people's feedback and then I can learn how to better tell a story because if somebody can't interpret what, what I'm doing, then I'm not doing a good job, right? Got it. So I also like to create... I don't create know if it's a matter of a good job. It's a matter of cohesive. Right, right, right. right. Because there is no such thing as... You know what I but mean? But I mean in the sense of like is the point that I want specifically getting across got it got you know it. yeah so this one also i just it it helps explain me in the sense of my work doesn't always have meaning and i usually just put on the canvas what i feel at the moment whatever comes to my mind i i always like to say like mind's eye it just comes to me like a flash, and I just start sketching, painting, and just going with the flow. So, so the rainbow obviously could loan itself to the LGBTQ it could. plus um, 
community and so I just wonder was that part of no. not not no. it wasn't but, but it definitely could right and but it could also loan itself to where does the rainbow really lead right right it could right it's like deception all kinds of stuff it could be up for t up for interpretation right well obviously <laughs> that's, what, that's what you do it for right yes all right wonderful wow well thank you for uh, this insightful conversation Thank you. Um, it's a, apparent that you are really thoughtful in, in the way you design I appreciate and that. Um, what you're leaving behind as uh, messages yes yeah so uh, where can people find your work and is your work up for sale um, I do sell some original drawings and paintings on my website um, stayguchi.com <laughs> uh -huh. but um, I usually sell prints and my work on other products such as stickers, um, tote bags, t-shirts, so. And your jacket. That's yeah. right, my and jacket. the jacket. So that means somebody <laughs> can actually give you a jean jacket and you'll yes, do Yes, I have done some custom design uh, jean jackets. Um, they're all done with acrylic. And then I kind of spray them with hyperbolic spray so that water just kind of falls off of it. Nice. <laughs> nice. Quite the creator. Thank wow. you. Wow. Well, thank you for bringing it here yes. with us, um, everyone. Angelica Bautista, Jelly Stay Gucci. <laughs> and once again, for more information on her and her work and um, anything that uh, may have interest you, uh, be sure to visit staygucci.com. All right, stay tuned. There's more open when we return.